Today's video was supposed to be Kettle's birthday video, but unfortunately, this video is coming a month later after her birthday. So instead, this is just going to be a regular cage tour video. I'm gonna talk about the cage, where I got it, the interior, yada yada yada. Um, but yeah, so before I start stalling, let's take a look at the cage I'm currently in. It's time for the moment you've been waiting for! Duh! Preparing the Krabby Patty! Here's the cage I got. First and foremost, let me be very clear that this video is not sponsored. Which is good because I'm actually going to be dunking on this cage in a little bit. There's lots of options out there, so there's definitely a cage out there for everybody. So you'll definitely want to make sure that you don't just get the cage that I got and you get a cage that's good for you. By the way, this cage is actually marketed as a cat patio, but we're going to ignore that because on this channel, we all worship Kettle. So now, this cage is a pigeon cage. Another thing I want to mention is a lovely post on Reddit by the account name on screen. I don't know how to say that. They were really helpful with all the questions that I asked them, and they helped me optimize the way I set up the cage. The biggest way they helped me was by sharing how they put contact paper on each level of the cage. We'll get into that later, but I wanted to make sure that my gratitude was made extra clear. Speaking of gratitude, I couldn't have gotten this cage without the help from everyone who donated. Like seriously. <laughs> everyone who donated really came through with this and are the only reason I was able to get this cage in the first place. I wrote all the names of the people who donated on the card to the right, but I accidentally spilled water on it. <laughs> Here it is anyways. Again, I seriously cannot thank you all enough. I would have never been able to get this cage without you. Now that this cage has been introduced, let's take a look at the pros and cons of this cage in particular. For starters, this cage is definitely a good size. It's probably one of the biggest indoor cages on the market that would be suitable for a pigeon. It's also pretty easy to clean because I can literally sit and stand inside of it. That's something you should be wary of by the way. If a cage seems like it would be difficult for you to clean, you should probably search for a different cage. This is preference based, but I really like the mesh walls. It has its own pros and cons, but it's made a few of the setup arrangements I have really easy to set up. You'll see what I mean in a little bit. I love that this cage comes with platforms. They definitely need to be prepped a little bit, but having them incorporated within the structure of the cage is really cool. I also like that this cage is customizable. You can choose which platforms you install and arrange the cage as you see fit. With my setup in particular, I chose to leave out an enclosed box that was meant for cats to sleep in. The last pro of this cage that I'm listing is the appearance. I really like the light washed wood and I enjoy the overall design. Now let's take a peek at the cons. The most obvious con is the price. It's nice, but I'm not 100% sure it's worth the price. Another con is the lack of a floor. When we explore the interior, I'll talk a little bit about how I handled that and then what my permanent solution is going to be. Another big con is how hard it is to assemble. To be honest, I could have never done this all by myself. My dad helped me build it and by help, I mean he practically did all of the work himself. The cage is also somewhat flimsy once it's all put together. It's definitely structurally sound, but if you push on it where the pieces connect, it'll bend a little bit. Overall, it's a nice cage. It's not perfect, but it works for me. Starting with the floor, right now I use newspaper on the ground to make cleanup easy. Underneath the newspaper is a few garbage bags that I've made somewhat watertight with tape. This is just a temporary solution as I'd like to make a more solid and permanent floor at some point. Kettle has an open food dish that she can eat out of. It does make her cage get messy faster than a different setup might, but it doesn't really bother me since she seems to like it. I also have a separate container for her grits. If you want to learn more about her food, I have a separate YouTube video where I taste test all of her seeds. I think she's a little grumpy with me. For water, I use this really big water dish. It makes it easy to put supplements in her water, and the dish part is big enough so that she can take a bath in it. It is a little bit of a hassle to fill up, but it's not that big of a deal for me. Now, let's take a peek at all of the toys and enrichment items I have for Kettle to play with. Pigeons aren't like most birds, so their idea of fun is going to be a little bit different. A lot of toys aren't going to do much for them, but they will enjoy anything that makes noise. This means that bells are a great option if you want to give your pet pigeon something to mess around with. Here's a video of Kettle playing with her bell.
Having lots of colors and textures can also be fun for pigeons. Just make sure that the toys are safe for them to use. Mirrors are another toy that you can have for pigeons. This may be surprising, but pigeons are one of the only existing birds to have passed the mirror test and are one of the few birds that won't be negatively affected by having a mirror in their cage. Another way for pigeons to have fun is with foraging. I have a shallow dish filled with seeds and nesting materials for Kettle. She likes to sift through and poke around in it. She doesn't use this as much as she uses her bell, but she does still get some enjoyment out of it. The first layer of Kettle's cage has another dish with some more nesting materials in it. It also has a little cover and Kettle seems to really like it. Kettle doesn't regularly lay eggs, but if she were to lay eggs, this would provide her with a cute little area to feel nice and secure. This is also just a nice place for Kettle to relax. If you follow my Instagram, you've seen this little nesting corner before. Definitely follow me on Instagram if you want to see more of Kettle on a daily basis. If she ever lays eggs again, Instagram is going to be the first to hear about it. The second layer of Kettle's cage is pretty bare. The only thing it has is a clear contact paper to keep it clean. By the way, every single one of these platforms in her cage is covered in clear contact paper. This protects it from her poop, which would be pretty difficult to clean if the wooden platform was left unprotected for too long. The third level of the cage has this green fluffy thing in it. Kettle really likes to play with my stuffed animals, so I figured she'd enjoy something like this. It's not quite big enough for her to use it like a smaller bird would, but I don't really need to worry about her eating it since she's not really one to rip at fabric or anything like that. Right now, I have it secured to the mesh on the wall of the cage with a few elastic hair bands. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it keeps it from falling off the edge while Kettle's playing in it. The fourth level to Kettle's cage is her favorite, and that's because it's the highest off the ground. She's right about at my eye level when she sits here as well, so it's a cute way for us to say hello to each other without her needing to be out of the cage. I really like that Kettle has a high point to relax at, since she's always perching on my doorways and other things that are high up. It's really cute to see her at this level because it's where she always chooses to sleep as well. In one of the upper corners of the cage, I have this little camera set up so that I can watch Kettle even if I'm not at home. You might remember it from a video I made a while back, where I tested a bird feeder with a motion camera in it. At the moment, it's kind of crudely hung up with a bunch of hair bands and such. It's surprisingly secure though, considering the circumstances. At the outside of the cage, I have this little light fixture that clings to the side of the cage. The bulb is a fluorescent bird light that's supposed to simulate sunlight for them. Thankfully, I don't need to worry about the wood or kettle getting too warm because the bulb doesn't give off any heat. I think it does do a pretty good job at lighting up the cage, but I think I'd like to find other ways to light up the cage as well. Speaking of lights, check out these awesome neon lights that I have. It was literally a childhood dream of mine to have my name in neon lights, and now this is literally my new reality. A company called Colossair sent it to me for free. The last thing I have to show you is this air purifier. You wouldn't believe how much stuff this thing pulls from the air. This video isn't sponsored or anything, but the company that made this sent it to me for free so that I can make a few TikToks about it. I hope this video was helpful. If you want to see a video about how I clean the cage, just let me know in the comments below and leave a like. Uh, if you want to talk with me in the community more directly, you can join my Discord that's in the link. It's in my bio, whatever, the description. There we go. I also have an Instagram where I post more like daily updates about Kettle and my other pets and me and stuff. And then of course I have a TikTok where I just post stuff. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching and